everyone, Chad Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com, and welcome to the Market Outlook, where we take a look at our favorite markets and we formulate an attack plan for tomorrow's trading. Tomorrow being the 14th of the month, already almost halfway through uh, July. Kind of crazy how fast the month moves, but when the uh, when the first half of it is really just kind of a big holiday, I guess it goes by a little quicker than you'd expect. Overall, we have another day behind us and another day of uh, Mrs. Yellen on the microphone. Now, it's seemingly, the last couple days, we've had a lot of movement going on, uh, but a lot of it has really kind of gone nowhere, and a lot of it are on the backs of what Yellen is talking about at that point in time. So, with her on the microphone quite often this week, it's throwing the markets for a little bit of a loop. Don't get me wrong, I like the extra volatility, but it does tell us a little bit of information that when we see her on the microphone, it might be a better idea to stay away for a little bit or at least kind of let the markets cool off before you go throwing money on it. Either way, before we jump on in, as always, let's make sure to swing on over to slingshopfutures.com, scroll down, and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. That's going to let you sign up for our email list so you'll know every single time one of these videos comes out. Along with that, we talk about a bunch of different stuff in the newsletter, everything from stocks, cryptocurrencies, options, forex, you name it, it's going to be in there at some point. And with all of the movement going on lately, there is quite a bit to talk about. So make sure to sign up for that if you haven't done so already. At the bottom of the page, in the latest blog post section, we post two different posts. Uh, two different blog posts every day. The first one is right before we open up the live trade room every morning, and those are the live trade room morning prep levels. Those are the big levels of support and resistance that you can keep your eyes on for that day. Uh, now, along with that, in the afternoon, we go over either a trade room example uh, of a trade that we had that day, or we go over a market psychology video going over the moves that we saw that day. Either way, the main purpose is really to just keep learning as much as possible. We want to be going forward, not backward. And then, of course, if you haven't done so already, make sure to click on the live trade room subscription and trial info. Inside there, you can sign up for a one-day trial with us. You can sit down with us in the live trade room and see what we're all about. Hang out with us for a day, ask questions, meet the members, see our charts, do pretty much what we would do on a normal daily basis. And it's a great way for you to kind of step on in, see what we're all about, ask some questions, and just, you know, kind of hang out with us for a day. Of course, if you do enjoy it, you can always sign up for a weekly or monthly subscription. And if you join as a full-fledged VIP member, you, of course, get the live trade room subscription as part of that package, so you never have to worry about spending anything ever again. Now, the Euro, for the most part, we had a relatively bullish day uh, in the morning, and that quickly turned back down and had a big bear turn lower. And really, a lot of times when you see this kind of shutdown, it's very interesting to keep track of the highs to the lows before that big move, and then measuring that move downward a little bit, because a lot of times you'll find that that high to low measurement from before going downward tends to be about where we start seeing support coming in, and guess what? Almost to the tick, that's where we found the bottom of the day, and ever since then we've just been kind of wedging out inside of there. Now the overall movement that we have going on is well, kind of sideways, and, and, you know, looking at the bigger picture, we really tried to get out of that range that we were stuck in for a couple days. It had a good move to the upside, but then after that failure back lower, we're floating right around those major lows, and this is a long-term buying area. This is where a lot of traders are going to be looking for the, those daily and weekly chart setups, trying to buy in cheap and hang on for the next couple days or weeks back up towards those highs. So the fact that we're kind of floating around down these major lows and they're holding still really gives us a big clue that even if the market does try to get another leg down, it definitely looks as though it's going to be short-lived, uh, especially with all of that support coming in back from the 7th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, all the way back through even a little bit of resistance there. Uh, on the third going into the fourth and a little bit on the fifth. So a lot of support and resistance in this area. It's a little bit of a hotbed uh, and the market is responding in kind. Now on the bigger picture, we definitely still have a nice little channel working its way down. Pretty obvious there. We're kind of floating around in the middle. Not a whole lot going on, but looking in terms of support and resistance, that cycle off of major lows, well, it's given us a pretty big clue that in the coming days to weeks, we may have a bullish euro on our hands for quite a while. In the short term, we are rallying a little bit higher, but for the most part, we just have a flat wedge. Normally, you can kind of get a direction of the wedge if you draw the wedge up, and wherever that kind of point is arrowed to, well, in this case, it's just flat. It's not really going any direction whatsoever. So we have a flat wedge 
not really a whole lot going on. And, it, it, you know, it, the overall sentiment, normally I would say bearish given the overall downturn, but that long-term area, especially down here to around those 14,190s and lower, really tough to want to be a seller. So I have to assume that short term, we may have some sell moves down to get back lower towards that 14,190. But as soon as we start coming into that area, chances are, Buyers are going to start pushing back once again as they have the past several days. So in the short term, I think selling is okay, but in the long term, I would much rather be a buyer. Now, looking at the short-term selling opportunities, I would prefer to sell at a better price. I want to sell as the market comes back to earlier congestion, and that would be between 14,562 up to 14,621. If we can get a little bit more of a pop, then we start coming in towards weekly and monthly resistance areas, uh, all kind of stacked up in the same place. That 14,766, just kind of cutting all of those in half, would be the next area of resistance as well. But again, keep an eye on the downside, because once we start pushing into those lows, it might not be that hard to switch into a buyer pretty quick. Over on gold, we had a relatively grindy day, lots of back and forth going on with gold, and just a lot of chop and slop. We can see there weren't very many consecutive candles today, and whenever you open up a chart and the first thing that you see is just a lot of wicks, a lot of black and white, black and white, back and forth, or whatever the colors on your chart happen to be, uh, it's a good clue that you're probably dealing with a range overall, and that may end up being a larger range if you zoom out a little bit. Now, in this case, on gold, not really the case. Uh, more so just kind of coming back to that bigger area of interest and every time we tap into that zone we keep finding a good amount of support coming in uh, and I think that's definitely a clue this big gap higher that we had definitely feels like there may be some unfinished business down here to kind of take care of that area but certainly looking like this zone uh, at around 1214 up to 1215 1216 it's going to be a big area for longer term buyers to try to jump in and hold that market for a rally back up towards the high the sellers are running out of steam. The last line of defense really that they have is that big dive lower, and that's going to be cutting across here. So we've got a little bit of room before we hit that major level around 1224. But if that starts failing, then it's pretty much sealed the deal. We're going back up towards the highs. The sellers still have a little bit of juice left in the tank, but they are certainly running out of gas uh, with all of this support coming in across the bottom. Now, in the short term, we do have a bear trend working its way lower and possibly a bear flag. Nice breakdown into a bear flag. But this flag is going on for quite a while, and it's a really wide, sort of ugly-looking flag. Generally speaking, when you're looking at flags, you want them to be quick, right? A nice move up, small pullback, continuation. A uh, nice move up, a sharp little pullback, and then continuation. You don't want them to be long-lived. You want them to be quick. And in this case, this has been going on for quite a while in comparison to the flagpole. And a lot of times what that means is the sellers are going to have a hard time getting back down to those lows. And if they do, there's probably not going to be a whole lot of con conviction behind the move, meaning that there is an anticipation that buyers are below this low. The line in the sand, or really the zone in the sand at this point in time, is going to be between 17.5 and 18.5, this 10 tick range. If we stay below this, we're looking to sell. If we break above it, we're looking to buy. If you're in the middle of it, then stay the heck away and find a different market because it is a mess inside there. But that's kind of the zone in the sand. We need to get below it or we need to get above it and then start running. And either way, right now, we're pretty much right on top of it. Not a place that I would really want to be trading. So I'm looking for either a move higher for resistance, around 18.5 to sell, uh, or you know, looking for that area to break and then use it as support to bounce higher. Uh, we do have a couple other things in the way, 19.6, 20.5, and 21.9 uh, for the buyers to kind of deal with. But if that starts breaking above, I would more anticipate something like this, where you see short-term resistance into support, short-term resistance into support, short-term resistance into support, and kind of zigzag our way back up towards those highs. Overall, in the long term, I definitely am on the buy side, or at least leaning on the buy side. We haven't seen the proof from the buyers really showing up yet, and that may mean that we just need to see them dip down get a trap below the lows and then fire off back to, to those highs but in the short term as long as we're underneath 17.5 we're looking to sell and if we're above 18.5 we're looking to buy over on crude oil, really nice explosion off the bottom, big amount of bullishness coming in off of the lows, and that failure to tap those lows, they missed the low by a little bit, and they showed up with some massive strength to the upside, kicking off a pretty bullish day. Uh, now, very, this is what you want to see, like we were just talking about in flags. You have a big, strong move up, 
short-lived little flag, continuation of the breakout, right? These short-lived little pullbacks, that's what you want to see. When it starts taking a really long time and it starts taking longer and longer, you get less and less conviction to the upside without them wanting to actually get a halfway decent pullback first. And, well, you probably know the next thing that's going to come out of my mouth. I want to see a better pullback. We're not seeing that conviction anymore. The buyers were aggressive pretty much all morning, but now that we're seeing the weakness and that flag continuing to go on and on and on and on, there's much less of a chance that the buyers are going to sit behind it for very long, and if they hit the highs, they're probably just going to give up around there. So at the moment, uh, I would prefer to see a pullback at least, at the very least, down to 45.89, preferably further down to 45.63 or 48. I doubt we're going to get down to 26, but if we do, that's another area as well. Chances are 89 is going to be the big one, though, and really just kind of looking to buy as cheap as possible from there. So definitely buy side weighted, but we want some better prices. And then finally, the S&P doing what the S&P does best. We have a solid range on our hands. Not really a whole lot going on for the S&P. Uh, mostly just kind of back and forth and, and really just kind of stagnating. Uh, and, you know, overall, taking a look at even some of the bigger time frames, we're really just kind of stuck in the same place that we have been for, you know, a, a good 24 hours or so. We're not getting away from this rally higher and they're just not breaking up. Uh, and in all honesty, if they were to break up, I would almost be a little concerned that there would be a deeper pullback in play. So, you know, given this range and given the massive amount of upward strength, I would almost rather see them dip down to last week's high for support at 24, 36 and a half and then start looking for buy side movement without them breaking the top. If we run into a situation where they start breaking through the highs of this, there is a very good chance that we're getting into a little bit of exhaustion and we may have a deep pullback on our hands if that is the case. For right now, we're dealing with a range, though, and we know what to do with a range. Buy low, sell high, stay out of the middle. We are cycling off of the highs. The trend bias is bullish, so we want to be on the buy side more than the sell side. And that means that either you're selling up here for some small scalps or you're waiting for them to come down to 2440 to 39 and looking to buy somewhere down here back for the rally up. So that's going to do it for the outlook. Now, taking a look at the news for tomorrow, we have quite a bit of news, but it's all coming out at 8.30 Eastern. Uh, at 8.30, we have the core CPI month over month forecasted at 0.2% at 8.30 as well. Core retail sales month over month forecasted at 0.2%. And also the retail sales month over month forecasted at 0.1%. And that's it. Uh, so all of the news that we have for tomorrow is coming out at 8.30, and then it's kind of done. And the fact that it's a Friday... Uh, and you might see an early in, early out kind of scenario where the buyers jump in early, they play around with the news, they get that early morning volatility going, and then they call it quits when that volatility dies down and they head off to the home uh, and, you know, kind of take a break for the weekend. So got to keep that in mind going into tomorrow. A little bit of an early in, early out type scenario is definitely possible. But like we always say, make a plan, trade the plan, follow those rules, and you'll be okay. Until next time, we'll talk to you all then.